Hi guys, well welcome back to Allotment Diggers, as you can see it's all gone. Uh, air cut, uh, number, number one on the size and a uh, bit of a frilly bit on the top. Um, that's what she's what, she, what I asked her to do. She got the shears and she had at it. Uh, I, I, felt like, um, I felt like going into Sweeney Todd the Barbers. Um, I had to check for the trap door underneath the bloody chair, but uh, anyway, she had at it and cut it all off for me. So, yeah, um, it's not too bad. I think I can live with that face. Other people might not be able to, but I'm, I'm going to look in the middle. Uh, it's the only one I've got anyway. Um, probably wondering where Buttercup is. You might be able to see a tail from time to time. Here, just move. She's just here, sat on a, on a magic carpet, aren't you? Hey, hey, aren't you? Hey, she doesn't know what to do for the best. It's it's been very warm. Ninety two in this greenhouse. It's cooking. However, it's it's it has been. Um, we've had a lot of rain. We've had um, some really really bad winds. Um, even a dale storm um, and like I say sunshine and uh, that's just today so yeah, the temperature's back up it's lovely and toasty in here I'm um, just finishing this video off what's the date today let's have a quick look at the date I don't know what the date is I know it's uh, Saturday today uh, 27th so this video is going to go up tonight I might try and, be, I try and get it up um, it's going to be late on tonight, but um, it will be up, and you probably see it, most of you see it Sunday morning. If we can get it up earlier, we'll do. But we've um, got a lot of a uh, lot of footage and a lot of editing to do, and um, that's where we come on to what we've been doing. Um, now, all my broad beans are in the the front greenhouse, and they're about yay high, and they need to go out. However, I've got my, my, my beam frame up, so I'm going to show you now me making my beam frame, and um, we'll, we'll come right back. Here after we are that. today, um, ready for putting the broad beam canes in. Now, this is an idea. I'm doing three rows, three, so it's got three three canes that way, and it's going to be five along this way. Then we're going to tie everything at the top together, and um, like I said, this board's just to show show me where. Where the canes need to go, so I can get them all nice and level. So I'm going to set the, uh, I'm going to set the camera up and uh, let's have at it. I'll probably end up speeding it up, but I'll give you some idea what I'm doing. Um, so watch this space. We'll be right back.
Oh well guys, there's the P-frame, all sorted, cable tied together. Um, didn't take long to do, oh no, we did speed the camera up. The bottles, everyone's going to ask me, why are the bottles, Mark? Well, stop you taking your eyes out and someone's going to say, why didn't you just bring the canes up to the top of the... Uh, to the top of the other canes well in hindsight i like to tie things onto them so i need that i use them little them little nodules on the top to tie things to so it makes sense and when they start rattling in the wind them bottles um they do scare a few of the birds away but not all of them anyway we're going to go and get the air brobbies now i'm going to stick them in and uh, that's this job done then we'll move on to the um, the shallots in that bed over there. I've got to clean it all first. Had some compost in there and then we'll, we'll plant into it. That's the next job. But the first, this job here is the one we're going to address right now. So I'm going to show you the, um, show you the beans and uh, show you me sticking them in. In fact, we've got a couple in each pot, so I might just stick the, the, the full pot in there, you know, with the two, stick two to a cane. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can just stick one to a cane. Anyway, we'll, we'll go and get them and we'll stick them in. So, watch this space. So the, the, the bean frame's up. I left it until the next morning before I put the beans out. And um, I'm going to show you the beans now. Um, the the Sutton Dwarf. Um, they, in fact, they won't grow as high as them, be them canes are. However, when we pull them ones out, we're going to put some others in. And hopefully uh, we get to harvest. That's the plan. I'll grow a different variety. But um, I'm going to show you me putting the beans in now. I'll show you the variety. I've shown me on the table before we put them in. And uh, so let's. These start are the Sutton Dwarf uh, bra beans. There's a there's a few to each pot here. However, I'm just going to stick them all in. And um, some of them have got two in. Others have got three in. But we're going to grow them up um, the canes anyway. And they're getting a bit pot bound in here, so they need to come out. Once they hit that fresh air, they'll be the be away. They might droop over for the first uh, first night or two, but uh, they will pick up. But yeah, today I'm putting my Sutton Dwarf in. Let's hope there's no bloody frost or that like that to start off with. You can take a good frost, but uh, like I say not the first night. But it looks like it's going to be all okay, so we're putting them out anyway. Right, let's get them down there with the others and get them planted. I'm just wondering whether I should bring a little trowel to dig them in. I don't think I need to. Um, I mean, I can put them in with my hands. I think I will take a trowel anyway. So, meet you down there, guys. So, we've got the, the pots set up against the, the canes. And what we're going to do, we're going to tie them up. Uh, we're not going to tie them up, we're going to just stick them in. Uh, wait while they get a little bit taller establish and then we'll tie them up but um yeah well there's, there's two or three in each pot so we're just gonna stick them all in i have got one spare one there so we'll see if we might stick it in this end one here but uh, i'm gonna get my hands in these now get down and dirty and what we do we put the peas inside the frame that way when we, we put anything around them, like fleece or all like that, um, they're not rubbing against the plants on the outside. So anyway, onwards and upwards, let's get stuck into this bed. Good route on that one.
last one. Like I say, bit bit pop bound, but this should be okay. Right. Give my watering in. And they should be fine these. So there are my, uh, my bra beans, they're in, and um, not before time so. So the beans are in, um, that that night, I put, the day I put them in, that night I got home here, there was a weather report, there was going to be a frost, so <laughs> next morning I come down and I thought, hey, oh, they're all going to be dead here, but no, they're all fine, there's nothing wrong with them, even though there was a bit of a frost, they, they, they look good. So the, the next job was to, to put me, um, me Golden Gourmet and my Red Sun Schwartz into one of the beds that adjoining that bed. Um, there's a, like a blue f um, cage which I made and it's on hinges and it just lifts up. But uh, it needed a bit of weeding, um, it needed some compost throwing in there and then we threw the Schwartz in. So I'm going to show you me doing all that now. Next job. I'm going to clean this, put some compost in here and just tidy the bed up. I'm going to be putting the um, shallots in here. So it's just lifting it up really. A few weeds in here. Right, I've just topped that bed up. I'm going to be putting my um, my garlic, not my garlic, my um, the deal. Bangings putting me off my shallots. <laughs> so I don't think what they bloody were then. So the shallots are going in there. So I just just put, put some uh, compost on there. I've already the soil ain't that bad actually. And uh, there's nothing, I've not grown nothing in it for the last what, 10 months. 
And I remember throwing a load of uh, blood fish and bone in there, so I don't need to... After I finished uh, growing what I grew last time, I did a load of blood fish and bone. So I just topped it up with some compost. We're going to come back in a bit and put the shallots in. I get the shallots in there. And uh, that's another another bed filled up. So these are the golden gourmet shallots, guys. As you can see, roots are coming through there. We've got to be careful when I'm putting them in. But, um, these are going in today. Uh, I've got another tray. I will be putting them in as well. But I've just thought I'd show you this one. As you can see, they will look, be able to fend for themselves. But they need to go in and get them in the bed. So, uh, yeah, that's the job I've got planned for, for this morning. Is put me shallots in. So, uh, let's get down to the back of the plot and um, get them in while we can. So, here we go. 35... Uh, shallots, uh, half of them are sun gold and half of them are uh, um, golden gourmet and uh, they look okay, they look nice and healthy so I'm going to get them into, the, into this bed now and then put the cover over this cover and it should keep them uh, protected and they should fly away anyway, I set my camera up and we'll, we'll have at it and get them in. Um, for roots, absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Very last one. There we go, shallots in, done and dusted. So as you can see, we've got the shallots in. There's a couple of smaller ones there, but hey ho, they're not, not wrong with them. But they're all in there now. And they'll do really fine in there, kind of protected as well from the frost, the, the hardest of the, the frost that we get in it. But, um, shut up! Bloody chickens. <laughs> One or two of them are molting. Still getting getting enough eggs a day, so I'm not mithered. But uh, yep, shallots are all all been put in there now. We've just got to go and clean that them trays, and uh, then we can continue with the, the next phase of uh, planting. What the shallots are done. So we've created some space in the front of the a lot in front the front greenhouse. However, that will not stay like that because it's going to get full pretty quick. I assure you. Next episode you will see what I mean.
but right now uh, we managed to get four of these trays um, out of there um, next video I'm going to show you is me um, I was I was in a, a place called Bent's um, garden centre in Lee and I was looking for, for something and I, I I noticed that I was looking on the, the racks with all this, the seeds and I, I saw the Atlantic giant pumpkins. Now I've been trying to get myself some for the last few years and not having no, and really struggling to get the seeds. Uh, Lindsay last year gave me one seed, one seed she gave me. I got it started, we put it out, but it was, it was like four months too late really. And uh, we got a pumpkin this big, but four months too late. I mean, if it would have, been, would have had them four months left, we would have had something ginormous. So I will show you a clip now of me doing this. Pumpkin. managed to acquire some of these um, Atlantic giant pumpkins. And I'm um, going to put a few of these in as well. I'm going to put them all into the pots and see what we get. I need two. Any more than that, I'll give away. But this year, we're going to have a see if we can break his old record. I think it stands at about £151. I'm pushing it. I'll be lucky if I get one at, at 70, 60, 70 pound, but um, you won't know until you try. Uh, we've been trying to get hold of these for the last couple of years and failed. We managed to get hold of them some last year, but it was too late. I mean, um, by the time we, by the time they started to grow, it was uh, it was winter. So yeah, this this year it's going to be different. We're going to get them into the into the pots and the bits. So that's another thing I'm going to show you me doing in a moment or two. So I'm going to get all the trays and the uh, the pots, and uh, I'll show you planting these as well. Here we are in the uh, front greenhouse, and uh, what we're doing, uh, just getting ready to put some Atlantic giants into these pots. Uh, just filling them up now, give them, pressing them down, get the pots all ready. There we go, so the pots are uh, all done. Right then, now then, we want the Atlantic Giant Seeds. Now these things, you can chuck them in with uh, any other seed and they're quite easy to recognise. There they are. So we actually got 12 in this pack so I'm going to do six now and uh, we do six again if uh, these don't come up but I think they will so what we need to do is push them in now then that's all we're doing right the sensor going too deep and I'm not going too shallow neither however what I will do is drown them in water so I'm just give me a sec I should have sorted this out before I did this but just fill me water small watering can up and we're gonna saturate these to death really wet get that seed soaking wet you want it to germinate you've got to wet them the longer it takes for it to get damp and to you know that's that's most of the time wasted really so try and soak it They've had a good drowning. Press them down. Compost over the top. In fact, let's just take them out of here and just tidy this uh, tray up. You can see where the water's come through. It's really soaked through. back in here now for the time being we'll put a label in them just to show what they are the first two to come out will go straight into the compost bin and uh, 
when I say that I mean that by we're going to grow them in the compost bin like we normally do and that's why we get that's the way to get the biggest pumpkins so um, the Atlantic Giant has sold got a few spare there we'll keep them handy I won't be throwing them away I say we we struggled to get these for the last couple of years so we wait with baited breath see how things go I'll throw a label in and uh, we'll stick them in well there's no room in the grow houses at the moment there's no room for anything at the moment but uh, we'll come back to these so I've sown some Atlantic Giant Hey guys, what you're looking at there are some rows um, for um, they, they fit on normal bog standard um, UK bottles, okay? Um, your Coke bottles, any of the bottles that you get from the supermarket, they all fit. Uh, these you get them, I, I buy these from Wilco's and they're about 80 pence each. Obviously, I've got quite a few of them. Now, a few people have made a comment about them. Um, John was asking where I was getting them from. Um, there's another another lad, Brian. Uh, so there was a few people asking where I get them from. So I get them from Wilco's. However, there was another lad, uh, Norman. He told me he batch bought some online from China, and when he got them, they're not the same fitting as our bottles. So uh, heads up, guys, don't buy anything from China. Um, not these things anyway, because they do not fit onto the bottles. Um, B and Q did sell them. Uh, Wilco's did sell them. Um, who else? Uh, Omen Bargains sold them. Slightly different, different varieties, um, but they all with the same same idea fit onto a bottle. So anyway, don't make the state Norman mistake Norman made and buy them from China because they don't fit. So the pumpkins in. Um, the pumpkin seeds are in. I've still got another six seeds left there, so if nothing happens, we can sow them again. Um, but fingers crossed, we get them off to an early start. Um, after that record pumpkin this year, I think it stands about £150. I think that's my record. We'll try and better it this year. But where we're putting them, we're putting them in the compost bin. We're going to put two, two of these pumpkins in the, the compost bin and we're going to... Um, grow them in that so um, we should do we should do okay I will be doing some butternut squash and some jack-o'-lanterns and stuff like that and we put them all in the same bed so um, yeah watch this space with that the next video I'm going to show is my Kelvin Wonder now um, each year we, we, we do the peas in gutters for the simple fact got lots of mice on here Buttercup, who's in a crib at the moment, she does a great job of um, taking them out. However, they're still there and there's thousands of them. <laughs> Every morning I come in and there's a mouse dead. She's got them all lined up next to her food bowl. I, I, I kid you not. I've got videos of every day what she, what she and they're all different. Some of them are really, well, I can't show them yet. Um, it won't be appropriate, but uh, she's lethal. But she's she's only just takes a few of these um, buggers out, and uh, well, mice they don't half like your beans and your peas, and they dig them out, and you think, oh, nothing's come up, and uh, they've them, they dug them out and ate them. So you can put a bit of paraffin, dip them in paraffin. It tends to work, but I don't like paraffin. I don't want to put anything on my piece so the best way to do it is to start them off in here and then move them out once they get to about this big so I'm I'm going to set my stall out just outside here and show you me, um, me doing these um, Kelvin Wonder be using multi clover multi-purpose everything what you need to know it will be in the video so let me show so you. folks today we're going to be doing peas and gutters and these Kelvin Wonder are what's going in them now there's no rhyme or reason to how you put a sow them into the gutters, however it is crucial that um, the soil's warm and the, the seeds are warm before you even start. Some people just leave them to soak overnight in water then sow them. You can do that, it doesn't really matter. It only takes a few days for them to germinate and then up they come. Within a few weeks we'll be putting them out. 
now um, this is the time now to sow in March and um, you know you can sow them as, as, as late as uh, as May and you can still get an, uh, an harvest in October so that's what we're doing today peas and gutters so I'm going to get me my gutters I'll show you what the, how I set them up and uh, we'll be right back I wonder how long she's going to stay there before she gets in the way uh, I need a bag of this compost guys what we're doing today is well you've seen the, the peas obviously so we are doing peas and gutters I come out without that yesterday oh my god uh, I suffered we've got his end caps there I'm just drying them out now and these are the gutters we're only going to use these two the best ones to use are these smooth ones these with the ridges the the roots sort of attach themselves to it I don't I know it's staffed it sounds daft but them little grooves there it's difficult for them to slide out so what you really want is something nice and smooth like this um, I don't put holes in them however there is an hole there uh, but in in these there's the, the, no, no holes in them and uh, well there's a reason for that because if you got holes what happens tends to happen is the the roots tend to go through the holes and it's a bloody nightmare to to shake them out when I when I'm doing my gutters um, peas and gutters to slide them out and uh, the less friction you got here the better so you want the smooth ones you can see that it's a bit wet at the moment because I've just like I said just tried so these are smooth one and if you look at that one there it's rigid so you don't really want to use them I'm going to use this to sort of I'm going to put the compost in I'm going to just flatten it out to start off with and uh, then we put the seeds in another tip as well don't fill the gutters to the top leave about 10 milli below the the lip here because what happens when the seeds germinate they push it all up all the compost you have compost everywhere so um that 10 milli when it when the seeds expand and the roots expand it will take up that um that 10 milli that you've you've not filled up so you know you'll see me do them in a minute show you but we're just waiting for them to dry once they're dried uh, we'll set the stall up here and we'll have at it so let's crack on <laughs> what what was that what let's see that then what she's uh She's falling asleep there. Let's hope she does fall asleep while I'm doing all what I'm doing. So uh, I've just put the, the end caps onto these gutters. A uh, bit of a faffing about getting them on, but they're on now. Um, I've got some clover multi-purpose, so I'm going to put an inch or so just in the bottom of it. Then we'll we'll show you the seed pattern that people what you would normally what people normally do, use. But I'm going to use just scatter them. But I will show you the pattern first. It's just like well you'll see but first things first I'm just going to top these these up with this compost and um, then we'll come right back
Now here's a trick I do. Are you going to get the, the watering can now and going to water this in and get the compost wet? That way when I put the seeds in they'll stick. I'm going to set the pattern out that I would normally do. And I'll show you the pattern what most people do. Like I said there's no rhyme and reason how I would put these seeds in. You can scatter them light to the winds. Um, or you can do them really neat. So let's water them. And then we'll come back. So they've been watered. So the next, next thing is putting your peas in. So I'll just set these out and then we'll come right back. I'm going to show you how, how I would normally do them. So as you see there, um, at the pattern, I'm going to bring you in close for a closer look at this pattern. Okay. So let's uh, take. The, we'll have to take the I've camera uh, off the stand. Sewn them the way, the traditional way. They're about an inch apart. Any 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 distance, they're all about an inch apart, and it goes all the way along. However, in the other one, they've just been scattered in. Now, well, what I'm going to do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna add any more to them. I'm just gonna put the compost over the top, and we'll see which ones is the better one. Um, myself, it make no reason. Make no. It doesn't matter. You probably get a few few missing here. That's the only problem. A um, few gaps. Where these are, these fill all the gaps up. But uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna do now? I'm just gonna add three quarters of an inch of compost. And it's just going to come just to there. We don't want it to come right up to the top of the box, uh, the the gutter, because when the seeds germinate and the the, the roots start um, growing, they push the the compost up anyway, and it comes flat to the top. So, uh, just before I cover them, I'm going to give them another quick watering, um, just to soak the seeds. Then we'll put the compost over them and give them another watering. Get them soaked, that's what you want to do, is really soak them to start them off with. Like I say, you can just leave them in a, in a jar with water overnight and let them swell out, then sow them. It's, it's, it's down to you, but all it does is uh, it takes an extra day for them to germinate, that's it. Or if you do it like soak them, they come up a, a day earlier. Right, put the camera back on the rest and... Um, We'll continue doing these.
So, I thought I didn't have the camera turned on then, that would have been good. But as you see, they've all been filled up now. I'm not going to water them, I'm not going to water them again because that is absolutely sodden. The seeds, I can tell you now guys, are completely so saturated so you don't need to do any more watering. Uh, these are going to go into the greenhouse now and they're just going to get left until they're ready to go out. But uh, let's just get the camera off again and just sh quickly show you. So as you can see, see how it's just, just below the surface. When they, when they start to push through, oops, get it on the camera. When they start to push up, they'll push all that compost so it'll go level to the top here. But anyway, there we go. Kelvin Wonder. That's how I do them. There's two ways I've done them there, but the traditional way and the way I scatter them. I reckon the, the one, the way I scatter them, I do better. But we wait with bated breath, I might be wrong. Worth uh, finding out though, so I'll keep you posted when they when they start to come through. So I hope you got a few ideas, a few tips from them, them doing with MPs. I said well, the experiment is um, the scatter effect or the the pattern. Um, it doesn't matter really, guys. But uh, I do find when when you when you put the peas in, it's best to water the compost because the peas stick to it, as I was saying in the video. Um, anyway, uh, that's what we've been doing. Um, there is one more video. I'm going to leave that right now until, uh, like I said, I'm going to. That's this is where we finish the video. However, there is one more video for you to to watch, and um, that's me having a bit of therapy um, on the plot. You're going to see me doing. Um, I'm going to be doing some weeding, guys. For a lot of people, weeding's a nightmare. For me. It's therapy. I really do like doing it. That's because I've not got many weeds on my plot. Um, you know, you can see in the videos you, there's no weeds, <laughs> and it's not for want for looking for them anyway. But um, I was surprised how many weeds I got out of this uh, this bed, uh, this strawberry bed at the side of me here. So, and the video I'm going to show. Well, obviously, I'm going to put on a bit of music, and speed it up, and show you what we've been doing. But that's where we leave the video. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to disturb Buttercup. She's fast asleep in her bed. It's the first time she's actually, she's she's not been in the way. Um, but yeah, that's where we leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment, subscribe, uh, click that notifications, and uh, if you want to see some more, I'll be back next week with a tour and well, much more. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like, I say, you've got any art and conditions, look away now. Well, guys, today I'm just going to be just cleaning this bed up here, just giving it a bit of a t bit of TLC. And uh, like I say, I'm not going to go crazy. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit, and then we'll take a break. Do a bit more. And we'll finally get the bed looking a little bit better. The strawberries look really poorly, uh, but we're going to tidy things up. Hopefully, put a couple keep out of the way.
so there we go folks that's the bed all de-weeded um, all what's left in there now are the um, the strawberries obviously we've got all the gladiolas around the edges and um, again tulips and we've got a couple of bushes in here we've got a couple of um, currants uh, current trees just uh, sticking up here they get coming back to life now but the thing is if you don't weed now uh, and you leave it until the middle of May, Mar uh, June it's a lot harder because you can damage the, the strawberries and what have you so it's always wise to do it while you can uh, there's buttercup going into the greenhouse there up to mischief well at least you kept out of the way for the most part of this and uh, the good news is there was no kakapoo poo in there so she hasn't been doing a number two you day little bugger she's sniffing around the bucket there that's why i just put a load of gladiolas in two buckets in the greenhouse over there she was actually thinking about jumping <laughs> jumping into the bucket Now she's sat in my bloody chair now. Oh well. The main thing is, this is done. So, I say get rid of the weeds and then we can have a five minutes cup of coffee.